Hey guys, so it's been a close to two months since I um, finished my Appalachian Trail through hike and I posted a video that covered all of the clothes that I brought uh, with me. So how I went from you know, starting in February with my winter stuff and then transitioning into spring where it got warmer. Um, but now I want to cover all of my gear. Um, and this is the gear that I pretty much finished with. And as I go through it, I'll kind of talk about, um, you know, if I made any changes to it. So let's just go ahead and start with the big guy. So this was my backpack. This is the Osprey Atmos 65 liter. Um, it's not the newest model. It's, um, no, it's the next newest model. But what you can see is the brain is up top there. I started with the brain um, and actually got rid of it. Uh, I think somewhere, probably around New York, uh, just because I found out that I could pack my stuff more efficiently and I wasn't using the brain as much and to save some weight, I got rid of it. Um, so this is the pack. Um, and for the most part, it held up great. Uh, as you can see, it's got some little wear and tear. Probably the, the biggest holes I got were on these packs or um, little pouches. So that one's actually not too bad. You can see the the holes up here. I think yeah, this one had a pretty good hole in it. Um, and I don't know if that's because of mice or if it was just me yanking on the zipper so much. But for the most part, the, um, the backpack held up great. Um, I have my spot GPS here, which worked perfectly. Um, highly recommend the spot. And I have my Z-Pax pouch where I kept my uh, phone in here as well as my camera um, that I used to film. So uh, very, very... You know, I can't recommend this backpack enough. Uh, it really held up great, uh, no complaints. Um, if I was to do an Appalachian Trail through hike again, I would probably get a smaller size, so probably not the 65 liter, um, or I might actually invest in a lighter backpack in general, but this thing definitely did the job and I do recommend it for someone who doesn't want to spend three, $400 on a backpack. Okay, so that covers the backpack. So. Uh, right underneath it, this is my sleeping bag that I used for about 95% of the entire trail. So this is the Kelty uh, Ignite Down, 20 degree, and it has dry down, so it is a down um, sleeping bag and compresses up nicely into this stuff sack. Um, there was a stretch in, I think around from like New York to Connecticut, so maybe a couple weeks, uh, where I actually switched this out for a 55 degree bag that my dad lent me. Uh, which was great because it was super light, um, but pretty much I only had it for two weeks before it started to get cold again, and I had this mailed back to me. Um, so yeah, but it was a relatively cheap bag. I think it's less than $200, um, and it's great. Absolutely fantastic. All right, so now let's move on to the last big three item. This is my tent. Oh, uh, yeah. So this was the Six Moons uh, Lunar Solo L8. And for the most part, I did very much like this tent. Um, my only gripe about it is that it is very dependent on the stakes and how you set it up. Uh, if you can't get the stakes just right, the tent won't sit up right, and it just you may not get the best sleep or best protection from the rain. Um, but there's no holes in it besides a, a few holes in the bug netting, but that uh, really didn't bother me at all. So as a whole, a uh, great tent. Again, a little bit cheaper than say like a you know, Cuban fiber uh, tent. And you can see it compresses up real nice and has the stakes in here too. Um, here's my sleeping pad. This is a Thermarest Trekker uh, that I have rolled up here. Didn't get a single hole in it at all. Uh, it did get pretty dirty and grimy from sleeping on the shelter floors, but um, you just wipe it down once in a while and be good to go. Um, and this was my luxury pillow. This is, I think it's a Thermarest, or no, sorry, Sea to Summit uh, Eros pillow. Um, this is really good, uh, inflatable pillow, and it has like a nice fleece lining, so uh, you're not sleeping on a plastic. Um, okay, and then uh, trekking poles. I used one pair of trekking poles the entire time, and these guys uh, were great. They took a, a massive beating, um, and besides uh, a lot of scratches here and there, um, no complaints. Uh, they didn't get bent. The flip locks, as you can see right here, uh, work perfectly still. Um, especially going through the White Mountains where I was pretty much putting all of my body weight on these poles. Um, they really held up great. And the tips, as you can see, are pretty much worn down a little nubs. Um, I think this one's, uh, this one right here looks a little bit better. So yeah, this one actually looks pretty good. So yeah, um, these were about 80 bucks at REI. They're the uh, Black Diamond Trail uh, trekking poles. Um, really great. 
Moving on, this is my clothes bag. So this is a Cuban fiber uh, bag. And these are a few things I didn't, or maybe I did cover in the last video, but I just want to emphasize the bandana was absolutely fantastic. Just get one, you have a thousand uses for this thing. And similarly, we have a little sham wow that I cut in half. I mostly use that to wipe down the walls of my tent in the morning when there's a lot of dew. So uh, very useful. Um, here's my first aid kit again, which is another Cuban fiber bag. I'm not gonna pull out everything, but what I do wanna emphasize are the earplugs. Um, so pretty much every time I slept in a shelter, I used earplugs uh, and they worked great. So other stuff in here, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste, antibacterial um, stuff, band-aids, uh, nail clippers, and that's about it. Um, you definitely don't have to get too carried away. If you get like a an injury or something like that, typically, you know, we just took care of it when we got into town, um, but have the very essentials. Okay, uh, and then moving on down to this guy. This was the um, Sea to Summit Thermolite Reactor. It's supposed to add like 20 something degrees um, to your bag. It's a no sleeping bag liner. Um, I used that for about two weeks uh, in early February and I sent it home. Um, I just found that I wasn't using it enough. Uh, it, it was good for really cold nights, but uh, once it started to warm up even just a little bit, I sent it home. So if I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't bring that. Okay, let's start over here. Um, this is actually a piece of gear that I did not use at all. Um, I had it sent to me, I think, in New Hampshire before I got the mains. I knew the bugs were going to be bad, bad. But again, I just used my bandana to drape them over my head, keep them out of my uh, ears. But I did carry it because, as you can see, it weighs nothing. Um, all right, here are my electronics. So all my electronics, again, were in a little um, Cuban fiber bag. I did get one little hole, but not too bad. Um, here's my massive charger, which, uh, is an anchor 20,000 MAH, whatever that means. Um, this thing was a beast. I probably never drained it less than a quarter left. Um, so it was probably overkill. If I was to do it again, I'd probably only do, bring like a 10, um, thousand one just because it might save a little weight because it is kind of heavy. So I had to cord charge that cord to charge my iPhone. Here's um, something I definitely recommend. Uh, it's Anchor 4 port USB. Plug right in the wall and I can charge all my devices at once. I don't know how many times I had people asking if they could, you know, plug into my uh, device here. Um, so this thing worked really great. It is kind of big, um, but it's uh, really great for when you get into town. Here's what I did all my filming on. So this is a Sony um, Action Cam AS100V. Um, I had it in this little protective casing, which I only used if it was like pouring rain outside. Um, this camera was great. Um, yeah. Uh, and then I have the little trekking pole uh, stick pick adapter thing that attached right to the bottom of the camera there. So you can put it on your trekking pole. But honestly, after a while, it just became too much of a hassle and I just stopped using it. Uh, I have my watch over there. This is my life proof case uh, that I use my iPhone. Worked great. Extra batteries. Um, this is the charge uh, camera right here. So I had three cords uh, in total, extra batteries. Uh, and again, those always went into this bag. Some other stuff. Uh, here's uh, my yeah, bear bag hanging rope. I also use it a lot for a clothesline. Um, my little Gerber knife that I kept right in my uh, front pouch on my backpack. Here's my wallet. Um, this is the second wallet my dad made because the first one I lost in Gatlinburg, which was very sad. Uh, and kind of sucked for a while, but I got all my credit cards um, canceled and sent new ones to me, uh, which was a pain in the butt again, but whatever. Uh, here's my black diamond headlamp. Uh, this thing was good. Okay, moving on to water stuff. Because I know that's a big topic on the Appalachian Trail. So for water, um, first let me pull this thing out. Uh, here's my pack cover, by the way. So um, I kept my pack cover inside of the base of a um, smart water bottle. And this is a, uses a scoop, which was uh, very useful. So I recommend bringing a scoop. This was my smart water bottle that I actually drank filtered water from. And then here's my dirty water bag, uh, which is a platypus. And I would just um, screw on the platypus or the Sawyer Mini, or sorry, Sawyer Squeeze to the top of this. And I know a lot of people complain that the platypus bag isn't good. Mine lasted me all the way from the very start, from Georgia all the way to Maine. Um, it didn't make it all the way to Katahdin. It made it about 100 miles shy, which was really sad. Um, but as long as you're not you know, too aggressive with these guys and just don't you know, be patient with the water, um, 
it should last you a very long time. Um, so that was my water setup. And then I believe this is the last thing. Uh, here's my food setup. So I have another Cuban fiber um, Z-Pax food bag. So it's a little bit of a thicker fabric um, Cuban fiber. I have my Sea to Summit long spoon. Here's my uh, Snow Peak, I think it's 700. Yeah, 700 uh, milliliter pot that have these little silicone attachments, which I thought were extremely useful. My dad actually helped me out with that. So um, I, he went to the hardware store and got a little silicone um, tubing and we slipped it onto the handles. So that was really good when it was on the burner. Um, a lighter, which la carried all the way from Georgia to Katahdin. There's my pocket rocket and the fuel. Another ShamWow that I kept inside of my uh, pot for, um, it, it, mostly just like a big napkin, um, kind of clean up some food scraps. And I kept everything in that little uh, um, sack right there. So that's pretty much it. I can't really think of anything else that I uh, carry that's not here. Um, but if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know. Um, be happy to help anybody who's um, planning to through hike next year or in the years to come. All right, I hope this helps you guys. And again, any questions, just comment below. Talk to you later.